let's drill down on the rising costs of remodeling and home improvement projects with the CEO of Angie. That's the company formerly known as Angie's List. 20 million people use this service annually to find plumbers, electricians, and other contractors for household projects. The CEO, Oshin Hanrahan, joins us right now. And, Oshin, what's happening right now? What are you seeing just in terms of inflation in the prices of these projects, given what we've seen for labor costs, given what we've seen just for material costs, too? It's a very volatile time. And, you, you know, you, you, you just hit on it with the challenge that people are facing with a major purchase like buying your home. You think about the ingredients that go into people buying their home. It's the price of the home. It's the cost to borrow. So the, the, the rate at which they're borrowing at and also their ability to, to create, that, uh, create that loan. And then the third is just the raw, the raw insurance cost as well of taking care of that home. So you put all that together and it's a very volatile time for people to make this incredibly important, important purchase. On top of that, we're seeing something else, which is more and more homes, particularly first, uh, first time and single family homes are actually being bought by institutional investors. And that increase is just adding to the uncertainty that people experience when making this really important purchase for their, for their family. What does that mean? If, if costs are going up, does that mean that people are starting to say, maybe we better hold off on doing some of these projects? Or does it mean that people are saying, OK, instead of moving, we're going to fix up our home and do these projects? What do you hear from the contractors on your site? Well, if you look at this time last year versus Q1 this year, we've definitely seen a softening of consumer demand. So rewind to this time last year, we had the biggest dislocation in supply and demand we'd ever seen. Consumer demand for home services was off the charts. And at the same time, pros were pulling back in some cases from the market, whether it was fear of COVID, supply chain, labor concerns. So that dislocation has definitely normalized, particularly in the last couple of months where we've seen softening consumer demand and we've seen more and more pros join Angie, more and more pros increase their spend on Angie and say to us, hey, our order books are actually a little lighter than we expect them to be. How can we generate more demand? We saw this before in 2007, 2008, when pros needed to generate a lot of work very quickly to, to, to fill the, the gap that they had in consumer demand. And we're not saying it's like 2007, 2008, but there's definitely a softening in consumer demand that means more pros are turning to Angie to drive their business and fill up capacity as those order books soften just a little bit. Look, if, if they want to drive demand, the best way to do that is lower prices. Is that likely to happen anytime soon? Look, I, look we, I think we all understand the, the supply demand curve and the elasticity, but I think there's so much... Uh, out of their control in terms of the supply side shocks and materials. You know, we've heard about lumber, we've heard about gypsum, we've heard about steel. That supply side just makes it so hard uh, to reduce price during this time. Perhaps it'll happen, um, but it's also in some ways linked to house prices. You know, people think about uh, the price of home services in terms of the price of their home. And so long as we've got this supply side shock on prices of materials and the, the labor constraints we've got, it's just hard to see pros reducing price during this time. You said that this is not like 2007, 2008, when we were in that housing crisis. Is this in some ways worse, though, when they're dealing with these high costs that they're not able to pass on? What do you hear back from the contractors on your site at this point? When we look at the softening of demand 2007, 2008, it was extreme. What we're seeing now is more a return to the norm. So rewind to 2018, 2019, and you take out 2020 and 2021, what we're seeing, if you drew a line 2018, 2019, you extrapolated that trend, that's where we think we would be in terms of consumer demand for home services. 2020 and 2021 were this anomalous blip where demand just exploded so fast. You had the combination of people at home for long periods of time. People's home became the center of their universe in a way that it you know, frankly never had before. And you had all the stimulus checks just driving consumer demand when yep. restaurants, bars, entertainment wasn't open to take that right. to take that capital flow. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's what's really happening here. It's just a yep. normalization of supply and demand.